Welcome to the Jongets Games update vlog for December 2021. As you can see, there is a ton of things that I'll be talking about today. It's certainly a lot more than I usually talk about at the beginning of one of these uh, monthly update vlogs. It just seems like a lot happened over the last month. Now, before we go into that, I would like to mention that if you prefer to hear a podcast audio version of this vlog, then you can do so by supporting the John Gets Games Patreon campaign at any level, and you can learn about that by going to patreon.com slash Games. Now, on that note, I would like to shift into a brief Patreon campaign update. There were 16 new people who joined into the campaign over the last month, and over over last month, I talked about 24 different games that I played last month. It's actually a surprising amount of games to play in one month. It was a really good month. Um, I started experimenting last month by moving the Impressions vlog into a Patreon exclusive, and I just wanted to let you know that these are all the games that I talked about, many of them multiple times, as I played these games several times and then gave my kind of evolving opinions on them. So if you are curious to hear my excited thoughts about uh, these games in particular, then please check out patreon.com slash Jongus Games, and um, you'll have full access to those depending on the level you choose. Uh, now, after that, it's time to go into some general updates. And the first one, um, well, you might have figured out already, and that's the fact that I'm filming with a brand new camera. Um, I've been filming with this camera right over here for five years, I think, um, something like that. Um, this was $1,200 when I got it uh, many years ago. I went from an iPhone to recording with this camera, and it, it was really a big upgrade for the channel. Um, this camera has been a workhorse for me. It's been great, honestly. Uh, I did some uh, kind of napkin math, and I think I've recorded about 2,500 hours of video with this camera right here. Uh, now, over the course of that time, it started to have problems, specifically mechanical problems. Uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, the focus ring snapped. It just, the plastic inside broke. So then I had to zoom in with the rocker right here. And then I noticed um, over the last month or two, the camera tends to now kind of zoom out when I don't ask it to which is kind of a problem because I don't notice it when I'm recording. And then when I edit, I'm like, why is it zooming out? It's kind of annoying. So I've realized that, you know, the, the hardware of this camera is just fatiguing after being used for so much over these years. And I decided I should probably invest in a new camera before this one breaks. So I don't have this one just totally crap out on me. And then I don't have a camera at all. So a couple of weeks ago, um, I did a bunch of research uh, and I really looked into various uh, options. And what I decided to do was essentially buy the upgrade version of this camera. This is the uh, Vixia uh, G40, and what I bought is the Vixia G60. Um, this camera came out, I think, about two years ago, so it's not brand new. It's a camcorder style just like this. Um, I thought about getting a DSLR-type camera, but um, those are also quite expensive. I mean, this new camera was, I think, around $1,800, so it was not cheap, <laughs> that's for sure. But this is, you know, my full-time job. And the camera is a big part of this full-time job. Um, but I decided I, I didn't want to get into the details of needing lenses and, and various other things, you know. If, it, if it's not broke, don't fix it is, is a term. And I guess technically this one is breaking, but the way it worked worked really well for me over the years. So I figured I'll just stick with a camcorder style. And so I got this camera. Um, literally, it arrived yesterday, and I've experimented with it a bit. This is the first video that I'm filming with it. And um, <laughs> one big difference is this camera shoots in 4K, or it can shoot in 4K. Uh, previously, I've been shooting in 1080p with this camera. And if I'm being honest, even at 1080p, this never looked amazing, especially these face shots where you're looking at me and looking at the backdrop. It always seemed a little bit blurry in a way that kind of bugged me. Um, so now <laughs> this is in 4K, and I've done a little bit of experimentation with this already. And to a certain extent, I'm a little worried it might be too good. <laughs> I was looking at myself in uh, Final Cut, and I felt like I could see the wrinkles on my face. Like, I feel like this brand new camera made me look five years older at least. Uh, and it definitely highlights the fact that my hair is getting kind of crazy lately because I <laughs> haven't uh, had a haircut in quite some time. Uh, but the quality of it seems really nice. Like you can you can really see how crisp it is. At least I can really see how crisp it is. And I'm looking forward to trying this out shooting a game. Like I haven't actually filmed anything on the table just yet, but um, it should work with my old mount just fine because it's essentially the same form factor as this. It's just like 10%, 15% bigger overall. So yeah, that's exciting. I now have actually two cameras that work. Not that I have any reason to use two cameras at the same time, but I technically have two cameras that work, which is nice. And um, I'm just happy to have a camera that um, A, is, is new, so <laughs> likely isn't going to break for a long time, and B, 
the, it looks better. Like I just feel like, I, and I hope that the quality of this new camera is going to be an upgrade to the overall channel. And I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Like um, if you think the quality is too good, like if you think 4K is just showing too many freckles or whatever, then let me know. Part of me feels like maybe I should film in 1080p and, and, and to not do 4K, even though I can. And I'll be experimenting with this uh, as time goes on. Uh, I shot a little bit of video with this new camera at 1080p, and even that looked significantly better than this old camera. So uh, that's exciting. It, it's always exciting getting new gadgets and whatnot. And I figure after like four to five years, um, it was time. It was time. Uh, so let's now move on to the next update. And this one has to do with the playing with friends videos. Um, the reason I side there is because, um, well, I love these videos. I, I, I've really enjoyed making them. I feel so incredibly proud of them. I think they're exceptional playthroughs. It's super fun to play these games with my friends Anastasia and Nick, but these videos are just not doing very well, which is frustrating. Um, they take on average two to three times as long to make as my standard tutorial type of video. So it's a significant expenditure of time. And then to put these videos up and have them do worse than a video that took 30% the same amount of time is a little bit tough. Uh, I, I had a bit of a burnout uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, leading right up into Thanksgiving, um, I worked really hard <laughs> throughout October and the first half of November. Uh, honestly, um, September as well, uh, specifically putting tons of work into these Playing With Friends videos. Uh, before we even went live with them as we were experimenting, and then when we went live, um, we've put, I think, six of them out now so far. And I say we, uh, but it's, you know, mostly me <laughs> putting in all the time to edit these and put them together. And I have to admit that it's been a bit of a, a bit of a gut punch uh, for some of these, in particular the Golem video uh, that I put out. You know, that's a brand new game from uh, some designers that people love. Uh, and I put that video out and uh, specifically the playthrough video. And it was um, the worst video I put out out of the last 10. It did significantly worse than another video that I put like six hours in. And I spent well over 20 hours making that Golem video. Uh, so that hurt. Uh, but another thing I kind of realized, or at least I'm considering, is the fact that I, I also started experimenting a couple times with splitting up the playthrough video with a teach video. Uh, I started that with Arc Nova and both the Arc Nova video and the Arc Nova playthrough did quite well, numbers-wise. So then I did it with Golem, and I put out a teaching video for Golem, which honestly took me like two and a half hours to make, and uh, that video did really well. And then a week later, I put out the playthrough, and it just bombed. And I think that people didn't really want to see it because they already seen it. You know, they 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 learned how to play the game uh, watching that first video, and there just was not that much interest in watching the second video. And, and I can't exactly put my finger on why that didn't happen for Ark Nova. Like a lot of people watched both of those videos, uh, but putting out that Golem playthrough afterwards and just having it nosedive was uh, was frustrating. So actually, after that, put out an Anno eighteen hundred playthrough with friends video, and I decided, you know, I'm just going to combine these back together again. Um, it was an interesting experiment putting out a solo instructional video like that. I was kind of trying to build some hype, putting the instructional video out and then putting out the playthrough like a week later or so, but that didn't seem to really work out in a way that I wanted. And honestly, I, I feel like those instructional videos could have been better. Like, I feel like if I'm making a video and I say, I'm going to teach you how to play the game, I, I kind of need to teach the whole game. But I was trying to be quick with those videos to teach like 80 to 90% of the game. But if you only know 80% of the game from one of these instructional videos, then why even bother watching the video at all? Like, go read the rule book, <laughs> learn the game that way. So I realized that this is probably kind of missing the mark trying to do those things. So instead with Anno 1800, um, I, I combined them and I also specifically made the, the teaching part an overview. I, I intentionally did not talk about the details of a lot of things because there's an assumption there that people will watch the playthrough immediately afterwards and get that extra context and learn about a lot more of the minutia when the video is together. Another thing I experimented with with the Anno 1800 video is I filmed um, the overview with a physical copy of the game. I actually have it here on the table still right uh, there. Um, uh, so I used the physical version of the game to kind of teach it, and then we shifted over to Tabletop Simulator to play it. And not a single person commented about that. I really thought that um, people would notice that because I've had quite a few comments of people saying they really wished that Playing With Friends videos didn't use Tabletop Simulator, that people didn't like seeing the game in that form. And, and honestly, that's the only way that uh, realistically, I can do a playthrough. It's got to be a tabletop simulator, but I figured for games that I have physical copies of, like there's really no reason not to film the physical copy of that to have the physical game and the uh, online version of it up there. Um, I kind of thought maybe that would be divisive. I thought maybe that would catch some people's attention, but apparently it didn't. But either way, uh, I'm just iterating. I I'm experimenting all over the place. Um, and I know I started this segment off with a bit of a sigh, but the Playing With Friends videos are not going anywhere, at least 
I don't think they're going to go anywhere at this point. Uh, you know, everything could change in the future, but I, I really do enjoy making these. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure exactly which one we're going to do next. Uh, December's a bit crazy logistically due to the holidays and whatnot, uh, but I'm hoping to get one of those out uh, later on this month. I just I, I just can't be sure if that's going to happen. Um, but yeah, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm going to try to combine the overviews with the actual playthroughs, and hopefully the videos will do better. Um, but I also just have to kind of come to grips with the fact that um, I want to make this content that takes a lot longer to make and less people want to watch it. And, you know, if this was just a job, <laughs> if I was just doing this for money, uh, well, first of all, the channel would be a lot different. <laughs> Uh, there would be a lot more flashy stuff, I imagine. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to lean into something that takes so much time and doesn't do as well if you're just looking at it from a numbers perspective. But I really do enjoy having these done. I feel so incredibly proud of them uh, that I want to keep making them and see if they can maybe get their own type of audience. Like, I feel like part of it's because they're new. A lot of people are used to the tutorial style. It's kind of what this channel has cultivated. You know, the 30, almost 8,000 subscribers mostly know this channel for the tutorial style, not for these playthroughs. So I, I understand that um, people who might really like those playthroughs aren't necessarily here already. And uh, I definitely need to give these videos uh, some more time. So yeah, that's um, the end of that kind of rambly segment. And now let's move into the next part, uh, which is uh, another thing, like what am I gonna do about this? You know, uh, in general, a lot of the numbers in my videos haven't been doing as well. And so I've done a lot of experimenting over the course of this month. And one thing I experimented with was clickbait, kind of. <laughs> uh, I watched some videos uh, about how to make your videos do better on YouTube, uh, because I feel like, you know, after doing this for seven years, I just really feel like my videos should do better. I don't know if that's conceited or me being hubristic or whatnot, but, you know, I've been doing this full time for, you know, almost two years now and I've been doing it for seven years and, and I see other videos that are made that get a lot more views than my videos get. And, you know, it, it's hard to, to pull back from that. And I know people make different things and people have different tastes and I totally get that what I make is, is very niche. But one thing that I kind of I uh, was kind of beaten over the head with when some of these videos I was looking into is that a big part of YouTube, or at least what YouTube is turning into, is is that you have to sell your videos with your thumbnails and with your titles. Um, that the subscriber count matters a lot less to YouTube in general these days, uh, and it very much leans on on how you actually sell your video there in that big subscription feed or in that sub suggestion box. Like, how do you get people to click that? Uh, how do you get them curious? And I wasn't leaning into that at all because honestly, it makes me quite uncomfortable. Um, but I realized that I, I need to experiment with this. So um, <laughs> what I've tried to lean into a bit is what I've been calling curiosity bait, um, or I guess realistically, it should be called click curiosity instead of click bait. But I've been trying to sell the videos a little bit without being disingenuous. There's definitely a negative uh, intonation to clickbait. Like the idea of clickbait, or at least what a lot of people think of it, is, you know, promising something and then not really delivering, but the promise is what gets you to go there. So I've been trying to add some allure into the titles. I've been uh, changing the thumbnails around a lot. Um, people may or may not have noticed, but I've gone through like five different iterations of changing the thumbnail, putting some of the curiosity text uh, right there on the thumbnail, but then it kind of seemed like maybe that was just a little bit too busy, so I've tried taking that off and putting it in the title. And if I'm, not, if I'm being honest, I haven't really seen a depreciable effect from any of this, which is frustrating. I have to admit, like over the years, it seems like whenever I try really hard to change something to help the videos, it generally doesn't do anything. And to a certain extent, it's kind of amazing how steady Jongus Games has been over the years with the subscriber count and the overall number of views that this channel gets. It's been steady like a rock, which is great, but you know, it's also... It's, it's easy not to wish it would increase, you know, have a bit of a curve instead of just being a flat upward pointing line. Um, so, yeah, this month, a bunch of experimentation hasn't led to any real uh, uh, aha moments. <laughs> I'm just trying things out to see if things help. Uh, I will say that the last iteration of change that I did, uh, it was Anastasia's idea um, with the Anno playthrough video is is I, I took the curiosity text off the screen. It seemed like the thumbnail was really busy. And um, she was like, what if you just put an image of the game, like as most of the thumbnail, like maybe that will actually pull people in. So I swapped the thumbnail out after that Anno video had been up for about 12 hours. Uh, and I put a new thumbnail in, which just said, um, uh, playing with friends, and then it had kind of a zoom in of what the game looked like to play along with the logo. And I swear, looking at the graph, it really feels like about 12 hours in, it ticked up. 
Not a lot, like maybe 5 to 10%, but it really did seem like that curve did change when I swapped the thumbnail out. So now I'm sitting here thinking, okay, well, maybe I could try to get some more curiosity going by trying to highlight some interesting components in those thumbnails instead of having words all over the place. So that's kind of where I'm planning on experimenting right now. The data point is one right now. So <laughs> I need to experiment more and see if that was just an anomaly, but it's definitely something that I'm going to be messing around with. And I hope that these weird thumbnails and channel, uh, title, uh, changes that I'm doing aren't annoying. Uh, I'm just, you know, uh, tinkering around, hitting a bunch of things with a hammer to see if things get better and hoping to not break anything. Uh, all right. <laughs> There's a lot of updates. Uh, the last one of these, uh, I honestly thought about not putting in here, but you know, these update vlogs are about me being transparent about the journey of John gets games as well as, you know, myself, the, the human, uh, and the gamer. And I've been having a problem the last many months, but really it's been hitting a peak about the last month and a half with my computer. Uh, it's going really slowly and it's a strange thing to complain about here, but it's, it's been a real problem. You know, I mentioned that these playing with friends videos have been taking a lot longer to make than my other type of videos. And a big part of that is because I'll be editing these videos and it, Final Cut Pro will lag so much and it drives me crazy. I, I, I can't tell you just how crazy this drives me when um, I have a really nice computer. I bought a brand new computer last year, uh, pretty much top of the line MacBook Pro. It was about $3,500. Like it was a lot of money, but again, this is my job. And so it makes sense to invest a lot of money into my job. Um, and it's, it's very frustrating to have something that's, you know, supposed to be top of the line, essentially, uh, just lag like crazy, like just basic editing even, uh, gets me a little spinning beach ball of doom. And there've been many times where I'll be like typing in the text for the, uh, the, uh, the timestamps and I'll type in text and I'll wait like five to 10 seconds before my computer puts the text on screen. And when you compound that five to 10 seconds of waiting, slowly losing my mind, you know, you do that tens and tens of times that turns into a lot of time that I sit there going crazy, looking at my computer instead of actually working. Um, I've tried a whole bunch of things to fix this. Honestly, I spent uh, two full days this week wiping my computer down to the, the bare minimum. Like I completely wiped it entirely, uh, brought in um, the old files, but I it didn't do a backup. And I just tried to do a complete refresh to see if that would fix things. And if I'm being honest, I'm now worried it's slightly worse. So at this point, the next thing that I have to do is, is try to bring it in. <laughs> like I think maybe there's a hardware problem with my computer, which is very frustrating. Um, so anyway, again, you know, these update vlogs are just about me being transparent about stuff. And uh, one of the things that's been dragging me down sometimes is, is that computer. Uh, I'll just sit there wanting to work. And I feel like the computer is just giving me the middle finger saying, I don't feel like letting you work right now. And that just drives me absolutely up the wall. Uh, but anyway, I'm definitely repeating myself now. So I think at this point that should bring the general updates to a close. And let's move on to the next segment, which is the shifting shelf. Uh, this is where I talk about the new games that we have acquired into our collection over the last month, and also the games that we've removed from the collection. And it's pretty imbalanced this month. I don't really know what happened, but holy cow, I got a lot of games this month. Now, I like to talk about the ones that are leaving first. And um, currently, I've only pulled six from the shelf. Although if I'm being honest, I'm probably going to remove a bunch more over the case, uh, course of this month. So it wouldn't surprise me if in the next update vlog, I talk about a whole bunch more games that are leaving the collection. Uh, but the ones that are going are um, Merchant's Cove, Clash of Cultures, Thunderstone Quest, uh, The Grizzled, Tabanusi, and Steam Time. Uh, I have different reasons for each of these. Uh, for Merchant's Cove, um, I got the base game and all the expansions to do a tu uh, sponsored tutorial. And that game has all these different asymmetric factions that you play as in this overall Euro game. And I'm, I've been quite interested in it. Like, it looks like it'd be fun, but I just don't really feel like investing the time to teach every single one of those factions to people around the table to actually play it. And honestly, it's been so long since I made that video that I probably have to watch my whole video to remember how to play the game. And I have so many games, so many new games that I would rather play. I just don't see myself getting to it and it's taking up quite a bit of space. Um, the same pretty much exact thing can be said for Clash of Cultures. Um, uh, it's a, the big monumental edition box. Uh, I've never actually played it. Uh, I played a little bit of a game of Clash of Cultures like seven years ago, uh, but the rules were taught wrong and we just didn't finish it. Uh, but I got the monumental edition. Uh, I did a sponsored tutorial for it. And 
it's a really intriguing game. It's got a lot of cool 4X type stuff going on, but I just don't see it hitting the top of the pile to actually get played compared to the mountain of other games that I think I would rather play. I'm much more of a Euro gamer these days, and 4X games have euro -y parts, but they also have, um, you know, uh, uh, troops on a map type stuff where you're fighting and positioning and whatnot. And, and it looks like Clash of Cultures is a really solid 4X type game. It looks like it could be a really fun time. I just don't see it really getting played. And it, again, takes up a lot of space. Moving on, we have Thunderstone Quest, which also takes up a lot of space. This is the really big addition that was sent to me by AEG honestly, a couple of years ago. Um, I played it with Jessica once and we quite enjoyed it. And we thought about keeping it around to try and work our way through the content because we both enjoy deck builders. Uh, but honestly, we never got back to it. We never played it again. And at this point, I've forgotten entirely how to play the game and I need to completely relearn it. And again, just I'm a broken record. There's so many other games I think I'd rather play. And this box is huge and it just takes up too much space. Uh, after that, there's the Grizzled, which does not have a big box. It's a really small cooperative game that I played a couple times in the past. Uh, but it's just been sitting on the shelf for a really long time. It's not taking up that much space, so it, it kind of seems silly to remove it. But um, I don't know. It, I don't see it getting played again. So I, I think I should just, you know, be honest with myself and try to move this one on to somebody who will actually enjoy playing it. Uh, after that, there is Tabanusi, which is a new Euro game from Board and Dice. Um, I have my copy because I did a sponsored tutorial for that one. And I actually played this one over the last month. Uh, and I talked pretty extensively about my opinions about it um, in uh, one of those Patreon exclusive uh, opinions uh, videos. So if you'd like to hear me talk quite a bit about it, then um, you can support the Patreon campaign and check that out. Um, the, the short version is we didn't actually enjoy playing it that much. Uh, and because of that, I just don't see a reason to keep it around. Uh, lastly, there's Steam Time. Uh, we've had this game for years. In fact, the last time we played this was right before I reviewed it, you know, back when I used to make reviews. Uh, and it's been in our collection the entire time since. Um, we really liked this game. Honestly, I should have gone back and watched my review it's been so long, I have no idea what I said in that review anymore. Uh, but it's been sitting on our shelf for all these years, and we, we thought, Jessica and I thought, we should play this game again and, and see if we actually want to keep it around. So we got to play a two-player game of it. I talked quite a bit about that, again, in the Patreon-exclusive opinions videos. And uh, we enjoyed it, but I think our time with it is done. So we're okay with losing that one. Now, moving on from there, we have the stuff that has arrived, and I've got 15 games <laughs> that have added into the collection over the last month. Uh, I bought a lot of these games. I think the vast majority of them, uh, due to Black Friday sales and holiday sales and all that. The first one is Six Castellos, and I got this one on the Black Friday sale uh, at Miniature Market. I remember seeing Rado do a video of this game. It's kind of a Carcassonne tile laying game with some cool stuff going on. I remember thinking it looked really cool, and it was on sale, so I jumped at it. Uh, I got a copy of Bequest, which was a press copy that was sent to me, and I actually did a sponsored tutorial for that, and I put that out just a few days ago on the channel. It's an I Split You Choose game uh, that's really quite quick, and it's got some neat stuff going on. Um, after that, I got a press copy of Boone Lake, which was really exciting for me. Uh, this was sent over to me by Capstone Games, which I very much appreciated, and I've now played this game four times, and I've talked about it, I think, three times <laughs> in those Patreon-exclusive videos. I've talked about it quite a lot. We've been really enjoying this game. There's a lot of cool stuff there, and I'm looking forward to playing this one more. Uh, I'm planning right now on doing a sponsored tutorial for that one in January, actually. Uh, after that, I got a press copy of Brian Boru, which is a hand-drafting, trick-taking area majority game, which uh, Nick Anastasia and I played one game of, and <laughs> I'm broken record today, but we talked about, uh, I talked quite a bit about how that game went in the exclusive opinions uh, episodes. Um, it was a neat game, but I definitely want to try that one more. Uh, I also got a copy of Dungeon Scholars for a, a sponsored tutorial, which went out a week or two ago, uh, which is a, a neat little time-based uh, writing game, like drawing in a maze. After that, we have Furnace, which I picked up uh, as part of... Actually, no, this wasn't a part of a sale. Um, so uh, long story short, I got my copy of Boone Lake through a friend uh, getting that copy from the Board Game Geek Con uh, library. <laughs> the copy I have is actually the one that was played at Board Game Geek Con. And when I went to go get this from my friend at a board game uh, cafe, I saw they had Furnace on the shelf. And I've been wanting to buy Furnace for months. And every time I tried to buy it online, it was sold out. So I jumped at the opportunity to buy it. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. I just showed up there to get my copy of Boone Lake and I bought Furnace and I walked out with that one. So we have that one because Furnace is an excellent game. Uh, I also got Haspel Connect, which is a really cool Euro game that I played once and it was very much on sale on Miniature Market for the Black Friday sale, and I just couldn't help myself. I remember really enjoying it, and I, I tried to play it at Board Game Geek Con a couple of years ago, uh, but I 
couldn't find it in their collection, which really surprised me. So I got a copy for like $17 or something like that, and I know I like it. I've already played it, so I'm really looking forward to playing that one again. After that, I got Nicaea, which is a brand new release from Hollenspiel. Uh, I actually bought uh, Nicaea as well as Westward Rails. Uh, I bought those together as part of the Holland Days sale. And when you buy at least two games in that sale, you get a free game. So that's the uh, Republic of Virtue, which is a small two-player card game about trying to not lose your head in the French Revolution. Um, I haven't played uh, uh, Republic of Virtue yet, but I have uh, played Nicaea and Westward Rails. In fact, just earlier today, I recorded a rather long, uh, exclusive opinion episode and talked about both of those quite a bit. Um, I also got a copy of Notre Dame, the 10th edition, because it was like $15 in the miniature market Black Friday sale. I really got swayed by a lot of holiday sales this last month. Uh, that's a 10-year-old Feld game that has some hand drafting and some kind of neat uh, engine building going on, or at least I hope it's neat. I've never played it, but it looks like a lot of fun, and for that price, I just couldn't say no. Uh, I also got a copy of Panorama uh, that was sent to me. It's a press copy, and I don't really know much about it. I might be doing a sponsored tutorial about it. I, I If I'm being honest, I read the rules like three weeks ago, and I've read the rules to like 10 games since then, so I don't remember the details of it, but I remember thinking it had a great art style and it had some neat uh, ideas. It's a relatively light overall game. Um, I've already talked about Republic of Virtue, but then after that, I got a copy of Rise of the Metro, which I talked about a bit in an impressions vlog a few months ago. I really dug this game. And then a patron of Dragon Gate Games reached out to me and said that they were going to be getting a big bulk order of it from, um, I believe, Japan, and they asked me if I wanted it in. And I said yes. So they got a copy for me, I paid them, and they sent it over to me, uh, and I've now actually played that one a couple of times, and I chatted about that one uh, this morning as well. Uh, I also got a copy of Sleeping Gods. I pre-ordered this one uh, because I think it'd be a lot of fun to play with a couple of my friends in particular. Uh, it was definitely not a cheap game. I think it was close to $100, but uh, it's a very heavy box, and I'm really looking forward to being able to crack that one open. It seems like it's got a, a cool campaign narrative euro wee style thing going on. Um, I remember when it came up on Kickstarter, and I just, it didn't seem that interesting to me, but then when it got fulfilled to Kickstarter, everyone seemed to be really enjoying it, and the, the, the FOMO definitely kicked in, and I looked into it more, and I was like, yeah, that actually does look like a lot of fun, so I now own a copy, I just have to set up some game nights to actually get it played. Um, I also got a copy of Super Skill Pinball Ramp It Up, which is the standalone uh, sequel slash expansion to Super Skill Pinball 4 k um, It's a roll and write pinball game where you move this little hemisphere pinball around. Uh, I did a sponsored tutorial for that one. <laughs> and I'm surprised nobody mentioned this in that video, but that little pinball is very mirrored. So you could totally see me and the camera and all that shining back at you from that little hemisphere ball. I was sure somebody was gonna comment on that, but nobody did. Maybe that's just the kind of thing that I um, I notice when I'm making uh, these videos. And then finally, there's Westward Rails, which I mentioned before. I got this from the Holland Days uh, sale. This is a, a very new game. It just came out like six weeks ago, and it's a cube rail style game from Travis Hill, uh, and I've played it a couple times, and I definitely enjoyed uh, what was going on there. So yeah, that is a lot of games. It's been a while since I've acquired uh, this many. Uh, we have way too many big piles of games in the house, which is, again, I think part of the reason why we're going to try to uh, cull some more going into next month, but we'll just have to see how those happen. Um, now, we can move into the next segment, which is going to be the upcoming schedule for December. And if I'm being honest, December is a bit light. Uh, and that was kind of by design and kind of by happenstance. Um, I have a couple of, uh, well, at least most likely one sponsored video happening in December, but most of them seem to have shifted into January or February. Um, and honestly, I'm planning on taking essentially the last, uh, definitely the last week of the month off, um, probably part of the second to last week as well. Um, so looking at that schedule, um, this week I'm hoping to put out a Patreon-sponsored video for Wendaki. Uh, that is a uh, sponsored tutorial. It's sitting right over there on the, the table. I have to crack that one open, learn it, and make that video. But I am hoping to put that one out later on this week. Uh, if not this week, then it'll shift into next week. Technically, that was supposed to be for November, but November got pretty crazy and I burned out really hard. And so I, I ended up postponing that one a little bit to try and... Uh, regather my my head. And uh, I think I, I'm regathered now, and I'm definitely ready to uh, uh, tackle that one and all the other videos. Uh, next week, uh, I'm also planning on putting out a Games Radar vlog. Um, I've done a decent amount of work into that one already, um, culling through a whole bunch of new games that have been showing up on Board Game Geek, and I'm hoping to put that one out next week. Um, also, I might be putting out a sponsored video for Dice Realms, which is a uh, dice builder, I think, from Rio Grande Games. I don't know a lot about it, uh, but I think it has dice and deck building and that kind of stuff going on. 
Um, and I'm hoping to do a kind of a rush job and get that one done uh, next week. Uh, I don't have the copy of it here just yet. So that one might slip, um, but we'll just have to see. Uh, the week after that, I'm going to be doing the live uh, questions and answers vlog for December. Uh, that's going to be on December 21st at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and I was uh, putting this in the schedule and then I realized that's my birthday. <laughs> that was not by design. It just was the right day based off of my overall schedule to do it. So that could be fun. I'm going to be doing a live video on my birthday. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes, but uh, that'll probably last about an hour or so. Uh, so you can definitely join in on that. And if you miss it, that's fine. Um, within the next few days, I'll probably put out an edited version of all of the questions and answers that happen there. Um, I'm also that week planning on putting out the Patreon bonus video for December, which is looking most likely to be a top 10 list for 2019 games. Um, this one is currently being voted on, but it seems like it's winning the vote by a decent majority. Um, I happen to make a top 10 list for 2018 a long time ago, and I made a top 10 list for 2020, but I never actually made a top 10 list for 2019 games. So uh, it looks like I'm going to try to uh, do some work, correlate some thoughts on the games that came out that year, uh, and uh, I'll be doing that one most likely live. Uh, I do like doing the top 10 lists live and then putting out an edited version of that after. And hypothetically, that's going to be the last video that I put out in December. Again, because of the holidays and um, you know a little bit of travel and whatnot, um, I think it makes sense to keep the docket somewhat uh, light. <laughs> and I hope people understand that, you know, in general, I, I put out a lot more videos than this uh, in every month, but I think December makes a lot of sense, especially with everything that's going on. And also, I'm hoping to get a little bit of a leg up on some of the projects that um, I already have here in the studio for January to kind of kick the year off uh, in, a, in a really good spot. So yeah, uh, that's going to bring this update vlog to a close. It's definitely a little bit longer than normal, uh, a lot to talk about. Um, and um, please, if you have any comments about anything I said, then uh, leave them down below. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about the new camera. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be tweaking things, I'm sure, as time goes on. Uh, probably the, the color balance and the exposure and all those kind of things. Uh, right now, I just have it on full auto mode because this is an expensive camera and I want to see how well it does just handling all that stuff on its own. And we'll see uh, how it actually looks once it gets rendered and put up onto YouTube. Uh, so yeah, I think that is going to bring this one to a close. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos just like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.